you know, last season because of injury. It's a strange one because she's 18, but she's played for Scotland and Rangers a fair bit. Now she is back. What has your feeling been on when to start introducing her? And maybe the same in a slightly different way, but similar with Jess Simpson. Yeah, both. Obviously, um, Chris, in this, you know, we're up for selection for this game. Um, I will imagine we'll play some part in this game, whether that be from the start or, or coming into the game. Um, yeah, look, two really young, highly talented players. That we, you have to give the right opportunity at the right time. Um, Emma's been waiting a while. They've been playing games behind the scenes. Obviously, been training every day. Um, but yeah, it might, it's a it's around time that we get to see them. They're probably ready now. Um, and, and as I say, I've said this many times because I'm really excited to see what they can do. So it should be should be good, and hopefully you'll see them in this game tomorrow. I appreciate she's not at United anymore, but I ask about this because we hear all the time about player welfare being important, how to keep improving it. Irene Guerrero spoke in an interview about kind of struggling with the situation last season for her at United, feeling at rock bottom because of lack of opportunity and even sort of crying some days. I ask about it as well because you mentioned last season about how you're always kind of self-reflecting. Mm -hmm. So how aware were you of how hard she was kind of taking that, not being selected? Do you look at a situation like that overall with her and think any regrets? Or what's your side of that, Mark? I mean, the reality is, Chris, that you know, players want to play football. You know, and and he has gone to go and play football. She's got consistent um, time where she's in Mexico. But um, you know, from our perspective, we have a great support team behind the scenes. Not everybody's going to agree with your decision making. Not everybody's going to agree that it's the right time. But from our perspective, you know, it's um, it's unfortunate she feels that way. But we we give as much support as we possibly can, and. Um, you know, we'll continue to review how we look at things, but, you know, I, I wish her all the very best, and, and that's all I can say. Thanks for your time, Mark. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Dan, please. Morning, Mark. Hope you're well. Good morning, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Good stuff. Um, I just wonder, kind of, how that performance at Leicester, particularly the attacking side, I know you had 23 shots on goal, you might have wanted to convert more, because I know you always want more, but... Um, you know, how much has that kind of set the standard in terms of what you want in the next game against Everton? Yeah, I think the reality was, Dan, that we looked at um, the performances against, and particularly probably Arsenal and, and Villa were the two performances. You know, we're adapting and evolving all the time. We're trying to find new ways of, of kind of um, putting little kind of com combinations together. Um, and look, it's just much more like us, Dan, re in reality. It's much more like us. And... From our perspective, we have to be that team in possession. Um, I think against Everton and against the way they play and against Chelsea, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but we have to keep that attacking edge. You know, That's what our fans love and that's what we have to continue to do. So it's something we spoke about. It's something we're going to make sure that we fix. And you know, it's just a non-negotiable at Man United and, and you know, we know that. You tweaked the, uh, the midfield a little bit. I know some of it was enforced, but you know how, how impressed with you, were you with those players? Because they felt like you know they created. They obviously put great balls into the box where you maybe didn't have it previously. It felt like <coughs> sorry, Is that right? sorry, but, um, it felt like yeah, they kind of brought the the dimension that was missing in the game. Yeah, and I think the reality was that you know. We looked at the balance in midfield, and we, we, we are continuously looking at that. You know, for the right games, you've got to get the right balance. I thought Simi, considering it was the first start in terms of in the league, was fantastic. Um, you know, Dom offers a lot of experience in there, and a lot of I think a lot of Dom's work you don't see is because it's off the ball, and it's a lot of covering space and covering danger. Um, and obviously, Grace has fantastic ability to create. But I thought, in particular, Dan, that the front three were were really aggressive. Um, you know, obviously Celine and JC for the JC for the goal for Terry, um, but then Celine creating those kind of like just really aggressive runs. Um, I felt that they were very very good, and I think we got the balance right. And for us, I would agree with you. I think we need to convert more of those chances. You know, we we looked at a little bit of position, a little bit of crossing, and we should have converted more. But I, I think when I looked at that game, I think we looked at Leicester. And they didn't concede. I don't. I think two was the most they conceded in terms of the, you know from that end because they defend in a block and a lot of so to do that was good. Um, equally, Dan, to get another clean sheet, right? Like we we had another clean sheet. I think it's probably the best start we've had to a WSL season defensively. 
um, one of the best teams in Europe and of course that will continue to be challenged but there's a, I think we've got a good balance this year now we need to just make sure we pump into the attacking a little bit more and just finally on Everton, it feels like you've had a few hard luck stories in the League Cup in, in previous years, but this feels like a great opportunity, obviously, with Newcastle United at, at home left as well. Yeah. To kind of have pressure off, to kind of get ahead of yourselves and put yourself in a great position to get through. Yeah, it does, but but equally, and, and this is where we won't be um, disrespectful at all to Everton, because, you know, I've just won the last game, um, albeit by that goal, but the, the reality is when we played against them early in the season, it was difficult at Walton Hall Park, so... Um, you know, we we expect a tough game. It is a game, obviously, we want to try and win because if we do win that, I think it almost secures us to to go through. Um, so look, we're gonna we're gonna try and do our best to win it, but um, it's also about balancing the week, I think. That's brilliant. Thanks, Mike. Thank Thanks you, Dan. Time. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Dan. Tom, please. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Tom. Um, good morning. Thank you, Tom. Sorry to hear about Ella being injured. Can I just get an update, maybe, on how she's doing? And he's on her. Yeah. Oh, can you guys hear me? Okay. I can. Yeah, I think you asked about Ella, right? Can you hear that? Sorry, Mark. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Mark. I hope you can hear me. I'm just asking how Ella's doing. Ella, too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tom. Yeah. Sorry. So. Um... Yeah, obviously Ella picked up a, an injury in training the day before the Leicester game. Um, she had uh, she took a calf injury in a, a, a small kind of part of the session, so um, it's probably it's definitely that she'll miss these two games. She'll miss the international window where we'll keep ass assessing her time, um, and then you know we'll see whether she's back for the block of three games after that. Um, but I can only update you as of then. But she'll definitely miss um, this block here. Um, and she'll miss the international window uh, recovering from the calf injury. OK, well, thank you, Richard. Speedy recovery. Uh, thank could you, I Tom. also just follow up on Chris's question about Irene Aguero, please? The, the, um, appreciate what you said there to Chris, but can I just get your reaction to the ID 